Welcome back. Uh, as mentioned, here in Wausau, Florida today, uh, with our friend uh, Dalton Carter, founder of the Wausau Possum Festival, this year in its 44th very large year. Dalton, the festival has uh, waxed and waned. You've had good years and you've had bad. And by that, I mean there are some years that you accomplish your, pur uh, your purpose, which is to have a good time and raise money. Other years, maybe not raising as much money. Uh, we are challenged by the economy right now, so right. there are fewer people bidding on the big watermelon in the watermelon festival, bidding yeah. on the possums in the in the possum festival uh, auction. You mentioned uh, several things that, that that open up all kinds of uh, lines of discussion. Uh, the possum. Uh, uh, being revered uh, to some extent by this festival uh, for its part in the uh, subsistence during some of the leaner years. We have uh, a possum auction and people can enjoy uh, uh, sampling some of the possum. Right. We get possum ice cream. At one time we had uh, potted possum meat that was, right. uh, that was sold. Um, we want to reassure everybody that, that no possums are harmed in the in the festival. The uh, the auctioned oh, possums yeah. get returned to the woods. Oh yeah, they don't go to the woods. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but they actually do serve uh, possum at the festival. Right. Yeah, uh, we we serve some possum at the festival, but uh, those that survive, we go uh, we turn them back to the wild. The ones that uh, we auction, we take them after the festival and turn them back into the wild. We get that question a lot. Um, somebody for the first time at the festival seeing these these possums auctioned, and they say, well, what is that person? He just won that auction, but it's, it's kind of like the dog chasing the tire, and he catches it and doesn't know what to do with it. What are you going to yeah. do with that thing? Yeah. Well, most of the time, I mean, what they, actually what they're doing, Paul, we have very few people that ever take that possum away. I don't remember but one, <laughs> and that was Governor Martinez, and he paid $700 for one and carried him somewhere and gave him to some kazoo or something. But anyway, what they do, they there standing up, to be honest, where you're holding the possum up to get the publicity, you know, politicians. But getting back to that, Paul, this festival has turned into something unique. Now, if you run in, a, uh, in our politics, if you down below the uh, Swanee River, you better come and get at the possum festival. The possum festival is a springboard to get to know the person that's running for office below the Swanee River, he gets exposed there, and it's a great help to him. And uh, it's, uh, it's, that's one of the benefits of the festival and the politicians. If you're below the uh, Swanee River, you need to get here to the festival. And, and if you're going to be uh, actually governor of Florida, president of the United States, I'd suggest that you come to this festival. Well, and that's exactly what I was going to point out. Uh, I think that the prevailing thought has been that if you fail to attend the Wausau Possum right. Festival during your political campaign, chances are you're not going to get elected. And that's, that's exactly held out right. more often than not. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. The biggest percentage of those that's attended, uh, they've been successful to get that office that they're seeking. Now, the Wausau Possum Festival, per se, um, is made up of lots of different elements, and a lot of people come together. It's a totally free event, and we advertise it as that. That means it doesn't cost to attend, but it doesn't mean that it's free to put on. There are many, many hours of blood, sweat, and tears that go into this. There are a lot of dollars that go into making this happen. So when we say it's a free event, we want to be sure that people realize it's not like it's totally happening on its own, just poof, it's there. There's a lot that goes into it. Let's start at the beginning uh, in the possum cycle. The weekend prior to the festival, we have the beauty pageant. Right. Uh, the Little Miss and, and, uh, and, and Little Mr. Uh, uh, Fun Day. Um, that has grown into a really nice event. Uh, this year, I think they had upwards of 50 contestants. Right. Again, some years you have more, some fewer. But um, it attracts a lot of people using it as a precursor to some of the other local pageants. Yeah, I, I was real proud of the beauty pageant this year with the uh, contestants that we got from different areas and then Actually, the beauty of those girls, we, we had a fine pageant. And then there were some uh, beautiful girls participating in the pageant. Well, and we often say that one of our most valuable resources here in Northwest Florida are our beautiful women. And I, I right. firmly believe that. My wife is a good example of it. I think she's the most beautiful oh, yeah. woman in the world, and she's from right here in Walsall. Um, so you've got the beauty pageant. Now, that is put on by the development club. Is that correct? No, that's put on by the fireman. So that is totally owned totally by the different fire department. From the development club. We do not have, that's not our responsibility. Okay. The possum auction is our responsibility and the possum plates and the t-shirts. Okay, so you've got that on the Saturday preceding uh, the week before the, uh, the first Saturday in, right. in August. Now you come to the night before the Saturday, which is the possum festival, and right. you have the king and queen contest. That's right. 
Now, this is uh, this is a very unique uh, part of this very unique festival. Right. And if anybody has ever attended, uh, especially for that first time, they get kind of a surprise. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I tell you what, I was flexible during my time as chairman, and in other words, I found this festival I took. Uh, not the first year, but the second year, there's a friend of mine, the late Rex Pettis. He said, Dalton, we're going to have a possum auction and let's have us a possum king and queen. I listened to what Rex had to say. I listened to my Aunt Gadley say, let's have a hog calling contest. I was flexible to these suggestions and I put them into effect. But anyway, uh, getting back, as I told you earlier, I wanted to plan something that everybody would have a chance to do. Now, we got the beautiful young girls in the beauty pageant. Now, what are we going to do with the ladies and stuff that wants to have some fun? So we come up with the Possum King and Queen, and that gave them an opportunity to participate in the Possum Festival, and they put a good show on. Um, I've been, had, again, as I say, I've had the fortune of, of being part of your festival now for, for uh, a good number of years, and I am still... I still never am failed to be amazed by what turns up on that Friday night prior to the festival. I've been in it a long time, Paul, and I'm still amazed sometimes what <laughs> turns up at the festival. <laughs> but there are bragging rights and a little bit of cash that go along with that, but some really stiff competition. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we got what we monitored that uh, particular event a little bit closer than what we had uh, been to having to do it. And I, I promise you this, we're going to keep it clean. Well, you know, um, so often uh, people get enthusiastic and they oh, may go I a little bit, a little bit right, too yeah. far. But, but, but that's a good point. Um, and before we go any further with the, uh, the itinerary for the festival, I think it's important that people realize that you put a very large emphasis on the fact that it's family, uh, family friendly, it's children safe. Uh, you can bring your grandmother, you can bring your 10 year old child and you're not going to be embarrassed by what you experience at the Wausau Possum Festival. Right. And not every event can say that. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Paul, I, and I, I promise you this, this, I was, uh, uh, this is, I was dedicated to that cause. That's the reason I asked the good Lord to guide and direct me. If I was going to work and plan something, not, and I don't take this thing personally, as I'd, I'd done all Friday, I told you a while ago, it was because of a cooperative effort. The development club and people that was not even a member of the development club taking part in helping make this successful. I says, I'm going to stay with a law enforcement officer, and we're not going to put up with a drunk around here to disturb a family that comes and enjoys fun day. I'm not going to put up with a drunk disturbing them. It's a day of fun. And uh, that was my intention from the word go. Well, I it's... still, you know, I'm proud that they got it under control. I just do common labor now. I'm not the ramrod, but uh, it's, it's a good, clean festival. Well, and it's, hold, it's held you in good stead over the years. So now we come to Saturday morning, the first Saturday in August, right. uh, and the actual day of the festival. Uh, the day starts off with a pancake breakfast uh, from 6 to 9, uh, and again, the, uh, it's held at the Masonic Lodge. Um, you had mentioned a little bit about well, how that came about and uh, the fact that those funds go into uh, uh, the, the Shrine Club. Has the Shrine Club been here for the entire duration of the festival? The Shrine Club has been here ever since day one with the parade. And in fact, if it hadn't been for the Shriners with the first fun day, we wouldn't have had a very big fun day. But Shriners really helped make a parade. And we are, and I'm just proud as I can be about the Shriners. They help make the parade. They're here every year. But getting back again, Paul, to the pancake breakfast, see? Saturday morning, the uh, Masons at the Masonic Lodge will have a pancake breakfast. Here again, this is something that they didn't do it say the first fun day because later on, I don't remember what year, but they, they began to serve their pancakes and we was proud to see that because like I said, it's a big festival and they sell their pancake play, uh, plates and put it in their treasure and disperse their funds uh, as they see fit. But uh, it's been helpful to the festival. I'm going to eat uh, pancakes with them Saturday morning. Uh, so you've got from six to nine, you get the pancake breakfast. Just, just within that time frame, you've also got a 5K run that is actually sort of standalone from the festival because it's put on by other people, but it has become a part of the overall festival. Right. Well, now, Paul, that uh, 5,000 run is it, a big thing, and I'm proud of it. But what we have there, most, most of those participants that come and get in the run, they don't stay long after they run. You know, you run 5,000 meters, you don't like hanging around till uh, 12 <laughs> or 1 o'clock to see the possum auction. But we have a big turnout of people coming to Warsaw to participate in this 5,000 meter race. And, but some of them stay for the festival, but the biggest portion of that uh, group of people will leave 
and you know go back home or elsewhere to get some rest after the festival. Yeah, but the neat thing about having these individual components is that somebody may come for the pageant and never come back. Right. They may come from the 5K run and not come That's back. Exactly the right. breakfast. Right. But they get a chance in each of these cases to experience a little bit of what Wausau has to offer. Right. You can't expect business to, to uh, relocate here. You can't expect people to move here unless they get to experience that first taste of the county, of our town. And this um, controlled environment of this very well-done festival, inclusive of all these elements, right. is a great opportunity to invite those people basically into our home and say, take a look at what Wausau and Washington County has to offer. That's true, Paul. What, what I wanted to do, uh, getting back again, I was responsible. I was a ramrod in planning this thing. I had people working with me. But uh, I wanted to plan something that would benefit the county, uh, Wausau community, my community, my county, my state, I wanted to do something good. I didn't want to plant anything. It would be a hindrance to my efforts or either somebody working at that. That, that was my goal. I wanted it to be a benefit to the county. And what uh, happened, uh, Wausau, Wisconsin, they uh, have chosen us to be their sister city. I invited the mayor of Wausau, Wisconsin to come down to Wausau's festival one year. And for some reason, you know, that he was... Uh, pre-scheduled and he couldn't come, but he wrote me a nice letter and said he, he couldn't come. So it's, it's widespread and we're proud of it. So one year uh, when Anita Bryant was uh, drinking orange juice for the state of Florida, she was promoting the orange, orange juice festival, the industry. So she was on her way out and they was going to find somebody to take her place. And uh, the state citrus industry got this advertising agency out of New York to come and uh, film the possum festival. And they did. They come from New York, and they was to meet me here, just like you did this morning. I said, at a certain time, I said, we'll go down and we'll make arrangements now. That was during the week. We get ready for Saturday, the big festival. So we go down to Walsall, and there's a little blinking light there. I don't even know whether the blinking light was there or not. <laughs> but these, uh, you know, a bunch of Yankees from New York coming down to film a possum festival. And I don't think the, the blinking light was there, but the post office there, and, and this elderly person probably was going over there to get her mail. One person about Thursday in Walsall at that, at, that you could see at that time. And I know they felt, they said, they ain't going to be nothing to this thing here. I, I said, just wait to the time. We're here talking with Dalton Carter here in Walsall, Florida. You're watching Real Florida Magazine, and we will be right back. Okay. 